Hello. All right. I bet you are excited because we are about to begin working uh, with variables and numbers and a little bit more code besides the help function for the first time. Uh, what we're going to be doing in this video is just working with some very basic variables, uh, not even like a data set variable, just like, you know, like a number uh, as a variable. So we're going to just get used to the very basic syntax of R and how we can manipulate uh, objects in R, because that is one way in which R differs from other kinds of statistics packages. Uh, other kinds of statistics packages are command-based. R is object-based. And if you're not sure what that means, don't worry. Uh, we will be talking about it a little bit in this video. So let's get started with our very first real command, uh, a very simple one. I'm just going to say that A becomes 1. That's it. So we're going to create a variable A, and we're going to uh, take this 1, and we're going to stick it inside that A. Okay, that's what we're doing here. So you might notice, first of all, this little arrow that I've drawn. That's the sort of the, the less than sign and then a dash. So what's going on there is that uh, R likes to remind you what you're doing, basically. And what we're doing here is we are, you know, we're, we're taking A, and we're creating this object A. And I want you to think of it really as an object that you're holding in your hand, like this glass of water, okay? This is an object that we have. And, you know, a lot of programming languages, you'd put an equal sign here. You'd say that A is equal to 1. So now I've got A and it's equal to 1. But that's not what we're doing here. What we're doing here is we are assigning this object to be a 1. Right? So now this glass of water, this glass of water is a 1. And that's why I'm using the arrow function. It's like I'm saying, hey, glass of water, you're a 1 now. All right? So I've got this line of code. I'm going to go ahead and run this line of code by doing Control and Enter. Okay, so now uh, if we look up in our environment, right, so now that A is going to be a 1. We can see it up here on our environment. We have the value A, uh, and that A is equal to 1. That's what it is, okay? So uh, we've got this A right here. Uh, and uh, let's go ahead and create some other values as well, because it doesn't just have to be numbers. We can also, for example, uh, have a string in there, some, some, uh, some words. So let's go ahead and create a B. And let's make that B uh, be hello, uh, not bellow, hello. Great, we're going to run that as well. So now we have two things. We have A and we have B. The A is 1, the B is hello. All right. So what can we do with this now? So one thing to note here is that there are different types of variables in, in R. And this isn't something you're going to have to worry about most of the time, but it is something to keep in mind. Uh, and so uh, what we've got, we've got this A, and this is a numerical variable, right? So it, it's a number. Uh, and we've got B, and this is uh, what's called a character variable. So we're going to do something, we're going to use something called the is function just to check on what kind of variable it is. All right. So basically, we're going to take this object B, and we're going to say, hey, is this object a character or not? And this sort of gives us a little bit of a hint as to what's going on with R, what I mean by object oriented, because what we're doing here, right, is we're not telling R to run the check if it's a uh, if, it, if it's a if it's a character variable command and do it to b we're no we're saying we're going to take b we're going to take b as an object and we're going to look at it and we're going to say hey is this object a character string that's what we're going to do so the way we're going to do that is with is dot character right so you'll notice something as i type that our studio popped up this little list of commands Right. This is sort of doing an autocomplete for us. It's showing us all the different commands that sort of look like that. And this is very helpful because, you know, as you're coding, you might forget what one command is like. And so uh, this will help remind you both what that command is and also some of the syntax for that command. So we got is.character. And then uh, in parentheses, everything's going to sort of go through parentheses here. We're sort of running these objects through functions, right? Think about what this is saying. I'm going to take this character, I'm going to take this object B, and I'm going to look at it. Right? I'm going to put it in the spotlight in those parentheses. And I'm going to say, is this a character function or a character object? I'm going to run that with control enter. and It's going to say true. Yes, this is a character object. It's hello. It's made up of letters. It's a character object. Uh, so there are a number of different kinds of variables. Uh, so for example, uh, the A uh, that we created there, that is a numeric variable, right? It's a number. Makes sense. So I'm going to check you know, is dot numeric. And it'll help me finish that out. Is, and is A, is A a number? Yes, it is. Uh, is B a number? I'm guessing that's going to be a no. Is dot numeric B? No, false. That one is not a number. Okay, so uh, we've got our, uh, our, our two objects here. 
Uh, and there's another kind of variable that I'm going to show you, uh, and it's going to be a factor variable. And you might be familiar with factor variables if you've done some sort of econometrics before. But basically, these are kind of variables where they have that they're, they have different levels. So, for example, a gender variable might be male, female, other, right? Uh, or maybe you have a state variable that could be one of the 50 states. And those aren't really strings exactly, right? You might write down Ohio if a person lives in Ohio. But it's not really the characters and the letters you're interested in. You're labeling that person as being in Ohio, right? So a factor variable is like a string variable. It's like a character variable, except that it's levels of different things as opposed to actually caring what the different strings are. So let's say that we've got uh, a variable C, OK? And let's make that Ohio. OK, so now we have C and that's Ohio. However, uh, you know, we didn't tell it to be a factor. We did the exact same thing as with B. So if we do is character C, it's going to say yes, right? But we want it to be a factor. We want to have the different states in there. So what we can do is we can do as dot factor, right? So the as is going to tell it, treat this as a factor. And if I do that, it's going to say, oh, look, here's the levels that I have. The levels of those different states is Ohio. I haven't told it about the other states yet. I've just told it about Ohio. But it's giving me a level, uh, different levels of this variable. So, okay, well, so now we did as factor C. Uh, let's go ahead and, and run is.factor, just check if it's a factor. False. Why is it false? Right? We told it to do as.factor. So you'd think we would get a factor back. So when we check if it's a factor, it should say true, right? But no, that's actually because we got to remember we're working with objects here, we're manipulating these objects. So what happened when we said as.factor? Well, what we were doing is we were saying, okay, Take this C, treat it as a factor. Great. There's a factor. I'm looking at this factor, that, and I'm, basically this factor is that I'm taking this C and I'm treating it as a factor. But I never told it to make C a factor, right? I just said, take this C and look at it as a factor. Yeah, yeah it's a factor. Great. Uh, but I never actually made it into a factor. What's the difference here? Well, if I want to, if I want to actually turn C into a factor, well, I need to and take C and I want to assign it to be a factor. You can sort of imagine it like I have a red deck of cards here and I had some sort of function that would turn it blue, right? And uh, this, this function says, hey, look at this deck of cards and pretend that it's blue, okay? So it would be like, yeah, it looks blue, right? But then it sort of melts away because I was just looking at it as blue for a second. It's actually still red, right? So what I need to do is I need to say, ah, okay, I need to actually do the blueify function but then I need to reassign, I need to tell this deck of cards, yeah, actually, I want you to be blue. I want you to be what you are when I look at you through the blue function. So let's do that with our C right here, okay? So I'm going to do as factor again, but this time I'm going to tell C to be what it is when I turn it into a factor, right? So I'm doing the same thing as before, but I'm not, I'm not just going to look at it. I'm not just going to turn it, they say, what does it look like as a factor? I'm going to then assign it to be what C actually is now. So now when I run this, control enter, uh, and I check again, I do, is this a factor? Now it's gonna say true. There we go. Because I actually, I turned it into a factor and I stored it as a factor, right? So I replaced C uh, with the factor version of itself. This works the same way if I'm working with numbers. If I take that A and I add one to it, right? That's gonna give me two. Great, but if I look at A again by itself, it's going to give me back that one because I never, I never actually changed A. I just sort of said, look at it a little bit differently. What would A look like if I added one to it? It's going to get look like two. If I actually want A to be two, well, I got to reassign A. So I'm going to say A is now going to get A plus one. So now I'm going to take A. I'm going to, I'm going to look at what it looks like with an extra one on it. It's going to look like a two, and then I'm going to shove that two inside of the one, inside of the A, and now that A is going to be. Two. So if I look at A now, it's going to give me two, right? Uh, maybe I want to still keep A around. Maybe I want to add another one, but I want to store it somewhere else. I want to keep my original A, and I want the new one uh, that looks like it's got a, an extra uh, a one in it. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to say D. D is going to be. Yeah, I'm going to set take. I'm going to create this new object D. I'm going to make that D look like what A looks like when I add one to it. So now A is a two. So D is going to end up being a three. Right? So if I look at D up here, you can see that D is 3, and I've still got that A as a 2. So to sort of sum up what we're doing here, right? why did I spend all this time just sort of assigning variables to things? So 
one thing is to just to start outlining some of the different kinds of variables in R, right? We have character variables that contain strings of letters. Uh, we have numeric variables that contain numbers in them. Uh, and we have factor variables, which are different levels of things. So, you know, not, we're not necessarily, it's not like string data. It's not like we wrote down what's this person's name. Instead, it's like you have these different options to choose between, like, what state do you live in, right? That kind of variable. I also showed you how to sort of start working with uh, different objects. Remember, in R, everything is an object. You need to think about it in that way. So if I want to look at that object in a little bit of a different way, great. I run it through a function, and I see what it looks like when I do it that way, right? But if I want to store my results, I need to take that thing that I've done and store it in some way. Right? And I can do that with the little arrow, the gets operator. You can also just say equals, that's, that's perfectly fine. Often, most of the time as well, you can just type the equal sign. That will also work most of the time. Um, so if I want to take uh, A and add 1 to it, I can do that. I can say, hey, what does A look like if I add a 1 to it? And it'll tell me. Here's what A looks like if you add a 1 to it. But if I want to make A 1 bigger, I can't just do that. I can't just say, what does A look like 1 bigger? I need to actually add 1 to it and then store the result in A, right? Updating the object. We're manipulating objects here, okay? All right, that's the very basics of putting in, uh, working with some objects in R, uh, and this is going to come up again and again as we start doing more complex stuff, right? Because everything that we're going to do is going to be taking some sort of object and doing something with it, seeing what it looks like in a certain way, taking a data object and running it through the regress function which is not called regress, but we'll get to it, uh, or taking a variable uh, and taking the log of it, right? Taking that variable, what does this look like if I log it? Or maybe I want to create a new variable that's equal to the log of the first variable. Uh, so I would, of course, take that variable and say, hey, what does this look like with a log around it? Well, it looks good. Let me store it over here. That's the kind of thinking that you want to do as you're working with R, right? You're always thinking, I'm manipulating an object. Taking an object, I'm doing something to it. And if you think about it in that way, a lot of R's syntax becomes a lot easier. And you'll understand on an intuitive level how these commands are put together. All right. That's a lot, of, that's a lot to think about. You might want to come back and review this video again once we've got a couple more commands under our belt. Uh, but hopefully this is a little bit helpful to you. And next time we'll get into uh, some actual data. All right. Thank you. Thank you.